And all the English, all the English, smash up, fucking smash everything up. Right, so we went over, done the gig, and because we were chucking furniture out the window, fucking two fights, three fights up, and uh, the, the, it goes, want money for damages. So I went, ah, fuck off, I'm Scottish, okay, fuck all. <laughs> <laughs> so eventually I said, okay, I'll, we'll give you some money. But they, but they wanted to make an example, because they thought we were English, English, English. So what wanted to make an example. So I'm like, fuck off, let's get in the taxi. So we jumped into two taxis. It was like a half circle. 
So we were getting a taxi and all these cop cars were coming up behind us. But the taxi driver never seen it, eh? So the taxi driver's driving off, there's the cops behind us. No, that fucking go faster. So we go to the airport, we're just inside the airport, and there's fucking all these guys with machine guns. They had the whole fucking road blocked off, eh? And so car were all guitarists, like, oh get in the car, get in the car! Quick! They told me panicking. So they took us back to this fucking took us back to this jail and we offered to pay they said, nah, we'll make an example, you you are British. So uh, they put us into this fucking van. And I remember I was 40, 48 years in this van and most of it was all like smackheads or like junkies. So they took us to the jail and heard us in this big line, a big line in this jail. And uh, they had these big rubber hoses and they're fucking smashing fucking these with his, with his uh, junkies, totally battered the fuck at them. So uh, eventually we were there for two couple of days. Then they, they gave us a lawyer, she was fucking beautiful. But she couldn't talk English. Right? <laughs> <laughs> right? She was fucking, oh, Pam Yoon for Dallas. Oh, she's gorgeous. Yeah. Uh, maybe people might remember them, but. <laughs> anyway, fucking, so uh, they gave us a lawyer, couldn't talk English. They find us 500 fucking whatever it was, that's all we had. Plus they gave him Cal's guitar. So, yeah, he wasn't very happy. Take your guitar, eh? it's really worth a lot of money. It was, it was a bit of shit. So, uh, so anyway. <laughs> so they kept, so they kept, they kept their passports. There was a guy there called Speedy. Him and him and his, the Spanish guy and his wife and his girlfriend. They kept us for five days. Then we flew back over for there. We flew back over to uh, America for a gig that was cancelled. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what a fucking nightmare that was. <laughs> Sorry. It's a great story. Yeah, it's a true, a true story. Very good story. Okay, the Mohican and the skull with the Mohican logo has been synonymous with the exploited and with you. Was it Jock from GBH nah. that did it first? No. Nah. <laughs> it was you. Well, okay. I, yeah. So what gave you the idea to cut your hair like that? And because, do you remember the first time that you wore it up? Yeah, well, I've done it. <laughs> no, I've got my hair because back then it was different. It actually meant something. Every night you had, every night you had my hair when we had my hair Every night was a fight night. Every cut would take the piss. Every cut would laugh at you. Go, look at the fucking state of this cunt. And what, so we started fighting them in. And you, you couldn't go into any clubs because every cut would never let you in. Because back then, Hotel Mohica was fucking a statement. Nowadays, like, after, after so long, you're like, David Beckham and all these cunts are my Mohicans. What the fuck? Hairdresser, cunts and that. Fuck, he's, eh? It's like, what's well, so fucking what punk was about? So after about 10 years, I was my Mohican for 10 years. First 10 years, and, uh, and then I got sick here because they made fuck all because all these, like, like I say, David Beckham and all these cunts are like, like all these fucking models and what the fuck? So I put them up. I refused to put my hair up. And my record company's like, ah, you've got to put your hair up, that's fucking, I mean, fuck off. And all these punks are going, you've got to put your hair up, I mean, fuck off. Because <laughs> punks, not about what you look like, it's what you believe in. It's, it's not what you look like, it's not a fucking fashion, it's not an image. <laughs> yeah. it's what you, punk's what, punk is what you fucking, it's what you believe in, your, in your personality. It's not what you look like. So, I, I, I do things, I've always done things for myself. I don't ever do things to fucking please other people. I always do things for myself if you like it, it's okay. If you don't like it, fuck off. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And then, nowadays you go fucking... <laughs> nowadays you go all these kind of, all these snowflakes and fucking kind of keyboard warriors. You can't even see that, you can't even do this. Go fuck yourself, you cunt. Yeah. Yeah. You go on Facebook. I go on Facebook. Yeah. Yeah. I, go on, I go on Facebook, you can't even go these... I got all these fucking cunts talking shit to me. So I, I try not to answer them. I always go back, fuck off your prick, come and say to my face, you fucking fat cunt. But then I get banned. I get banned not because I'm told I'm a, fat, a prick. I get called, I get fucking banned because I called them fat. I'm like, what the fuck's that about? Hey, fat is them. What's that word? I don't know. Hey, what the fuck's that about, you fucking keyboard pricks? Hey, really? No, you can't, you can't even do that, you can't even do that, you can't even... Oh, the laces are different from that. Sure, what the fuck? Fuck off! <laughs> eh? Hartley, Hartley was right what you said earlier. You fucking punks, punks are being yourself. They're living your life the way you want to live it. 
there's no big fucking doing things going on, like people doing things. It's like I've done fucking, I've done drugs speed every day for 34 years. I'm not proud of that fact. But I've done it, I've done it, not because somebody else was doing that, I've done it because I loved it. And it's like anything in life, if you, if you want to do something, you do it. If you don't want to do it, don't do it. Yeah? I think, I think nowadays, the young people have got so much peer pressure. And, get fucking so much, and a, lot, a, lot, a lot of people need to stand up for themselves and say, no, I can do what I want to do, I can wear what I want, I can say what I want. If you don't like it, fucking fuck off. Yeah. So fast forward to some early tours. It's 1985 in Los Angeles at a Golden Voice show. You're playing the Olympic Auditorium with D.I. Kids were shoulder to shoulder. The show was amazing and full of energy. The punks were in such a frenzy, it later turned into a riot outside. Do you remember that? Yeah, I remember, yeah. I was at fucking, I was at the things of minute viewing some news, news, TV news fucking thing. I'm going blah, 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 blah. And then I get back to, driving back to the fucking the venue, there's all these police helicopters fucking flying about and all these, all these cop cars, all these cops smashing up people. And I've got to blame for it. <laughs> what? I've got to blame, I was, like, I was exploited for it. Like, what, fuck off. <laughs> yeah. Uh, good times. <laughs> yeah, that was good times, but I loved it too. The best. What show stands out the most in your mind as the most exciting and the most scariest? The most scariest was uh, played in New York at the Ritz. And ha Harley was saying earlier about uh, the skinhead back, back in the 80s and 90s, fucking all the skinheads, like, they hated us, eh, because they fucking, you say. It's, it's not a, it's, it's not anti American it's an anti fucking government song. But because it has fucking USA, because oh, fuck you say, fuck you, what they fuck you cunt. Yeah. Every time, eh? So back in then, the Lossic Fraud, the Chromax, all these, all these fucking, all these bands hated us, eh? All their pals used to fight all the time. But the, the worst, eh? Uh, the only time I was in the, the lot of Crystal Meth, eh? And uh, so I didn't get a fuck, eh? So every, every night we fight every cunt. And I was on the other side. <laughs> so anyway, so we done, we done, eh? Uh, the Ritz and there was like fucking hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of skinheads and I was only an Indian there. <laughs> yeah, so it was all these skinheads and they were, they were two or three deep and they'd fucking just come, come forward and smash every cunt in the front there. So all these cunts with big the American flags going, fuck you all, you cunt, fuck you. I just blow up going, oh, fuck off you cunt, suck you. Yeah, fucking like, oh, you wee cunt. Yeah. But, but inside I was totally shit myself. Yeah. <laughs> I think over that bar I'm fucking dead. <laughs> so so yeah, that was the most violent gig. So the next night, we had, we had a night off. So Motorhead were playing. So the guys said, I'm going to, go to see Motorhead. So okay. So we went, went around the back of the building. and we sneaked in. I was up on this balcony. I could still recognise a lot of the skinheads from the night before. I was watching, I was always watch their faces, eh, to see who's fucking chucking balls and shit. So, I could see, and they're all enjoying it, eh, they a good time. And then Lemmy said, eh, and this song's for what he's exploited. Next minute, there's a fucking black cloudy ball was chucked at him. Like, fuck you, fuck you, you cunt! <laughs> <laughs> so, 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 <laughs> oh, my fuck him, man, eh. This went from what he's exploited, fuck these cunts. Eh, so, I have to apologise to him, sorry, Larry. <laughs> yeah, we're not very popular here. <laughs> so yeah, that, that, was the violent, that was the most violent, but like, uh, aye. Yeah. Totally, aye, that was the most violent one. But, we heard, but, but that, on that tour, we had, uh, had 40, 40 gigs, us, and Biohazard, who were really good, and uh, Typo Negative, and on that 248 gigs, I had 26 fights with Skinhead every night. <laughs> hey, you get it? We didn't we played in San Francisco. There's a big fucking circle. And they're like, fuck you. The whole, the whole fucking thing, there's about 10 or 12 of them. It's like, fuck you. So after the gig, the one guy was out all night, he comes up to me and he goes, eh, can I get a picture? <laughs> I'm like, fuck off, you fucking Raj. Hey, get the fuck for a battery. Hey, fucking idiot, man. Unbelievable. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Great stories. So 
So popularity of the exploited blew up in the USA and around the world, and even metal bands like Slayer covered your songs and Ice T with Body Count. Uh, what did you think of those renditions? Obviously, they're fans. Shit. <laughs> I'm not bad, eh, but shit. I'll tell you a story, a true story. Fucking, there's a lot of true stories. But, but there's, uh, at the time, we never got any, hardly got any press or fuck all back in the UK. Yeah, but it was quite hard going with exploited eh, because they so much hate. So, we got a. Uh, they were asking to see, uh, oh, Body Count and Slayer want to cover some exploited songs. So I said, well, that'd be good, but maybe get our, see our name up on the, on the title in the movie. And I never asked for money or fuck all because I wasn't bored. I just wanted to see a bit credit with Exploited. I went, I didn't want to see like Watty Buck and all that, I didn't want to see the Exploited. So it uh, comes up, the credits come up. Song with Ice T, Slayer, fucking John Duncan, Walter Buckin. I thought, what a fucking pricks. So I went, so I went to see it. Slayer were playing a festival f a few weeks after. So I went, oh, we'll go and see Slayer, eh? And we couldn't even go on stage and toast, we got totally fuck off, eh? I went, what fucking pricks? Really fucking. Aye, sorry, fucking pricks. <laughs> and we actually, we done a, we done, we done a support with Ice Tea. And it was in the, in the papers, eh? Scottish whores empty the fucking Ice Tea's dressing room. Well, all our mates were in and emptied on the fridge and that, eh? Totally like fucking total tramps. <laughs> Sorry. No, great answers. I love it. You can go on. Um, so you've been across the globe. Um, what countries have you played? Well, that's not what countries have you played. What country do you wish you could play that you haven't played yet? So you've played thousands of countries. Yeah. Probably Thailand, maybe. Thailand. You have never played Thailand. I've been to Thailand. I've been, I've been there a lot. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think it's only it's only old German guys with young kids. We should have seen Jimmy Percy there. <laughs> yeah. Pedo cunt. It's a fact. I saw to some guy last night. With Jimmy Percy's t-shirt on. He's like, ah, he goes, he's, he's a big cunt here. Fucking fool him. I thought I was going to get barred. And he's fucking, he's like, ah, he goes, eh, oh, uh, Jimmy Percy, he's a fucking knob, you cunt. Eh? You don't see, you never see the rivers in a program called River, River, help me see. What? Riverside video with a TV program, Riverside. And he's doing like alternative dance. You don't see it, anybody see that? Oh, it's fucking funny, it's fucky. It's like, let's do that, fuck off. <laughs> this guy, Jerry Ponce, Sham, Sham used to be a massive band. A fucking thing to a lot of people. Then he comes back to this alternative dance, fucking like. What the, what the fuck, you fucking prick? <laughs> yeah. Anyway, sorry. Well, again, I, was, I, keep, I keep getting sidetracked here. You don't have to apologize. What's your favourite country to play, by the way? Alright. Favourite? Uh, England? England? <laughs> 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 ah, nice one, high five. <laughs> no, I think... Uh, uh, Chile. Between South America, the people, Chile, I think Bosnia, Croatia, great places. Russia is a great place to play. We're, we're good people. Uh, I think uh, South America is really good. Not so much, well, most of them are going to say that. Uh, aye, it's a good place, aye. <laughs> but I think one, one, of my, one of my favourite places to actually play is in America. It's a uh, place in Santa Ana. Like, I mean, like, we played there with the Cro-Mags. Uh, a few months ago, and the fucking unbelievably, he killed the people. All these young kids, like young girls, I mean, fucking like, like we're like gazelles. We I mean, fucking these just young kids jumping at the, over the barrier, like fucking, like, like fucking. I mean, what the fuck? Give me some of the drugs, come on. <laughs> yeah, fucking great, a great venue, good people. I mean, that, I was, that was a lie. I was there, I saw that show. Are you, are you there? I was there, I filmed uh, you, remember? No. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I must have been washing my hair. <laughs> it was a fantastic show, and it was, it was full of young people, which was really interesting. What is it like to see so many young people that are into your music? This is a new generation. <laughs> totally weird, it's normally it's all kinds like me. <laughs> Oh, yeah, God, <laughs> no, no, it was, it was quite, it was 
be honest, the last American tour, we are talking about the cro mags was fucking absolutely brilliant. cro mags Harley, Harley Flanagan, it's a fucking legend. This guy, I don't know if you read the book or that, but this book's fucking totally 100% real life, eh? The guy's life, how he's still alive is unbelievable. He's a fucking 100% good guy. And the guy, the guy in the, I kid the cro mags have split with two different parties, like, we him and his uh, ex-band members, band members, but uh, I only know Harley, and Harley's like a, one of the few American guys that I like. People like Henry Rollins, fucking wanker. Hey, <laughs> lying cunt. He's a fucking massive lying cunt. I'm a liar, fuck off, go fuck yourself, you prick. <laughs> Jello Biafra, another fucking liar as well. But, but like I say, how Hal, is well, it's Hartley, Hal, you cunt. <laughs> Did he see stand him up? Sorry. <laughs> Some prick, get it right for fuck's sake. <laughs> you have a bit of a rivalry with Jello Biafra, right? No, it's not. It's not. No, what it is. It's, you eat Jello You have. It's diet. It's Jello. Yeah, there's always room for Jello, yeah. Harley. No, the thing, the thing is, I hate liars, eh? Like, I hate, I hate fucking li I hate constant lie. If you've got something to say, say it. Say it. And it's like. But Jell, Jell, like I like the Dick Kennedys, the, the, the early stuff's great. But he was, he was over here in the UK and he was he done an interview. And all the, all the bands he said they liked, or the, or the punk, punk bands he said they liked, I'm not, I'm not talking to be exploited, I'm talking about other punk bands. All the bands he said they liked, oh, great band, great band. Then a few months later, we went to America. And was into, I read an interview, it might have been Maxwell Rock and Roll, which is a fucking shithole fucking magazine. Uh, total shit, my guy, fucking assholes. Anyway, so he did an interview with them. He was asked the same question, what you been up to? Oh, I was in them fucking Europe, and what was the bands like? And every band they said they liked over here, they totally said they were shit. I thought, what a two-faced cunt. <laughs> eh, if I, if I got America, fuck you, we got American pussy, what's that? Who do you like, like them or like them? I'll say, ah, yeah, no. And I want to just, I want, I want to say something to fucking, because I'm not. If I, if I say something, I mean it, I fucking 100% mean it. Doesn't matter where I am. But, but I thought, Jill Baffer, what a fucking lying cunt. And then he's it, made, made a few stories about us, eh? And the, two, the stories that I've heard in this book and stuff, it's total bullshit, eh? It just lies. That's why he's a fucking me fucking knob. <laughs> be baldy bastard, you cunt. <laughs> eh? We, we played, in fact, we played punks. We played uh, in the. Uh, was it fucking. What's the, what's the first one in uh, Las Vegas? Punk rock bowling. Thank you, I, I knew I'd get there. So, we, we, a few years ago, we were over there, eh? And, uh, and I was watching, we, we were only really playing that day, but I was watching the bands. Then somebody goes, uh, fucking, they told him, all, I, I was there. I was there, they got a fucking bomb. And uh, so you got all these security guys, a big fucking big mob of security guys, to surround them, as if I was going to attack them. Like, what well, fucking, it's a fucking magic cunt, fuck them. <laughs> really pathetic, eh? Take your baldy head and go, you cunt. So when the pandemic hit, um, I was watching on the internet and I remember you wanted to keep touring. Your perseverance is inspiring. You bounced back from a lot of serious health problems, one being a heart attack you had while you were on stage. Did, oh, you, did you know you were having a heart attack when it was happening? The second, I uh, one before, but I never knew that. Eh? No, I didn't, I just felt like, was, anybody smoke, I don't smoke harsh, but like, people that smoke harsh, even if you know too, too much, you have a white, you got to pass out. That's what I felt like, eh? That's what, that's what I thought. I felt like it was something like I've been smoking like fucking hash. And then I just collapsed. And, uh, and uh, it was different for people because you've got pains in your chest and whatever. But I just felt like I'm going, ugh. Oh. <laughs> and then everybody's going, fuck, I'm going, oh no, nightmare. And then so I got, I so got, had a, I've had like five heart attacks. I had a quad heart bypass and fucking got a pacemaker, like Robo Punk. <laughs> <laughs> Eh, eh, so I, so, I, like, so me, to me every day is, then I got really fat, I stopped doing drugs now, fucking, after 34 years, every day doing speed, I got fat as fuck, and so I had a choice, like, uh, and I stopped, get my, get my, get my act together, and start being healthy, 
and we were all candidate gangs and that's and I was I went, actually I wanted to kill myself at one point, I wanted to kill myself because I was so depressed. Because I'm always I've always been fat, I've always been fat, I've always been fucking active. You've lost it now. Thanks, sir. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm a bit fat but I was I. But like uh, I saw like for me no every every day is, every day is a bonus. Yep. That's why I look at things as like uh, today. Thanks. I was going to say, you are the comeback kid. Your health has improved. You're more fit. You're an inspiration to many people to keep going forward no matter what. And I hope good health stays with yeah. you. A lot, of, a lot of people, like uh, my doctor, my, my heart surgeon, the guys, they told me, say my heart, I should be dead. He goes, if, if, like, you should be dead. Like, fucking, I don't know how you're still alive. And it's because I've still got a pound in my wallet. <laughs> And my, wife, my wife would spend that. <laughs> so a few years back, you made a really cool animated video that you can catch online. There's an animated video, right? Is that an animated cartoon? I've seen it online. Which one? Polo slot. You, you shared it. I shared it. <laughs> I must, I we'll go on to the next question. No, 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 no. <laughs> what video? Yeah, it's a music video. All oh, right, I thought it was a guy in France. I was a guy in France done, done that. There's like a skull, a little skeleton dude with a mohawk like I was, like, I was, a, guy in, was a guy in France, he'd he done the Mackie yes. the Wands videos and other videos. <laughs> ah, he'd done, he done, he done a couple. That one. And actually won a, won a few awards. You like it? That's all right. It's great. It never cost me fuck all, but I, I love it. <laughs> I'm Scottish. <laughs> Check it out, it's really no, cool. I, that was it's good. actually like, won, very cool. It won quite a few awards, right? It won uh, a few like short video awards. Yeah, it's done, actually done, very done, cool. Done a couple, done porno slot. Oh, that's a question that I was going to ask you. Ah, okay. One for me. Did you used to be a porn star. Sorry? <laughs> ah! <laughs> Somebody told me that, so I'd ask you. A porn star. Did you? No, no, I'm, I've been hacked. Uh, <laughs> so she says. <laughs> so they say. I recognize that face. <laughs> <laughs> No, I'm not a porn star. <laughs> okay, so... Um... <laughs> now you've got me stumped. Yeah. So, actually, you've, act you've covered some of these questions. So, you know what? I would like to open it up to the audience to see if anybody has a question. We'll Nightmare. pick on you. We'll pick on you. Exactly. So, anyone have a question you want to ask Wadi? Just shout it out. Oh, good question. Fuck the hips, you cunt. <laughs> Oh, fuck it, we'll be on 5 1 probably. I see someone in the back right there. Hand up. Shout it out. What do you want? You. What's your question? <laughs> What's that? <laughs> I've never met the guy yet, but like, uh, he's one of the few guys that, like, uh, if it wasn't like Harley said earlier, if it wasn't for John Lydon, they wouldn't be in the punk bands. They wouldn't be any exploited. Because they want, why? What what you start what is what punk started as it was just another music fashion at the time. But what actually done, what people people would never realised is like back in the back in the seventies now when Maggie Thatcher's a total cunt and there's so much poverty in the UK, so much poverty. Like the the, the fucking but fucking so much fucking anger. The working class has so much anger that when but the, so punk music was an angry music meant to be ang for the working working class. And, that, and so when everyone said punk was dead, eh? It was all spandy ballet shit and all that clumsy like that. And they say, like, I'll tell them they've danced, Sham anyway. So, <laughs> fucking. But so, so when. You hey, it's so because you like Henry Rollins, you cunt. <laughs> hey, by the way, he does, I. He does, but Henry's my man. He kept that one quiet, you cunt, eh? Eh? Eh, told you to come back to haunt you. <laughs> Sorry, what's the point, boy? Why? <laughs> so I. I've, not, I've never actually met John Lydon, but, but I do respect him, I. Yeah. yeah. But it's butter out of it with shit. <laughs> <laughs> but John's a fucking fat cunt. <laughs> yeah. If there's, one pers if there's one person in the world that could fucking kill and torture, this is I guess it's like, I'll get me cancelled, but it's that cunt. And as for, uh, as for, as for Gary, Fucking, last time I seen Gary, I lost his front four teeth out. <laughs> I lost four earrings, he lost his front four teeth. Then, the, then, the, then the, we're in America, he was picked with an English drummer, and the guy was quite a guy, yeah? 
So Guy, I'm dealing with the Crystal Brothers World Drugs, so Guy went in the van and dragged Gary with fucking, was picking on, picking on the drummer, I mean, leave, fucking leave him. So I used to say, I started to lose his speed. If anybody put their face near me, I'll just fucking stick it on them. Right, so, uh, right, so, so Gary had done it, so I remember him fighting in the van. I lost my four earrings, he lost his front four teeth, and, and his face was fucking like a big fucking beat spot. <laughs> right? So, so, next day we had to fly back to, to, back to the UK, and Dolly Parton, Dolly Parton, well, well I've never seen John and Gary because they kept away from me. They were hiding for two days. They got back, then they got to the airport, and Dolly Parton, they said to him, hey, honey, well, I'm to you. He said, no, we've been in a car crash. We've been in a car crash, I just smashed fuck you on me. So, to, to answer your question, no, I, I didn't really talk to them, mum. We're going to wrap it up and Jill will take one more question. <laughs> it's been how long? 18 years. That's, that's one question I could never answer. You're working on it. You're oh, working oh, yeah, on it. Oh, I feel a whole flush coming on. <laughs> Come on, Wadu, we have a lot of material oh, sorry, now. What's question? So, all right. Now we're putting you on the spot. I, I don't know. That's not like, no. I can tell you the same answer, but it's fucking, we've got loads, like, we've got loads of good songs written. Music-wise, we've got about 16 brilliant songs written, but I, just, I need to put lyrics to them, that's the problem. I'm the problem. <laughs> uh, hey, was, well, like, well, for me, I, to be, for me, I write songs, for me, I've, got, I've always had to be angry. When writing songs, I've always got to be angry, because for me, punk's angry music. And then, and, over the last few years, with my health being shit and I mean, I'm being quite happy and content with my life, I find it harder to write, to write angry songs. That's, 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 not, that's not an excuse. Uh, no, but like I say, we've, got, we've, got loads of good, we've, got, we've written loads of good songs with four different guitar players. The songs that we've actually kept. But I just I need to put lyrics. If we, if we are going to do an album, if we are going to do one, it'll be for next, next year. If it doesn't happen next year, I don't think it'll happen. Eh? That's a fact, eh? So, and uh, and by the way, I'd like to say thanks to everybody, all the old cunts here, who supported all the bands all these years. Because without, without all these people, there wouldn't be any punk, there wouldn't be any band, there wouldn't be any new bands coming here. So, so, so thank you. We love you, Wadi. We love your sense of humor and everything that you've done and everything you've brought to punk rock, and we appreciate this. Let's give it up for Wadi. Cheers.